America's public enemy number one in the United States, the drug abuse. These words were said by Nixon in a 1971 press conference. He also later went on to say that in order to fight and defeat this enemy, we must wage, we must, if necessary, to wage a new all-out offensive. It has been more than 40 years since former President, 37th President Richard Nixon declared the war on drugs. And even though, in theory and in paper, this war on drugs seemed like it was necessary and it was a good way to lower the crisis of drugs, in execution, it was anything but. The war on drugs has actually done more harm and has done more bad for us. And for today, I'm here to tell you why the war on drugs is not what Nixon planned. We will go to three main topics. The first one is the balloon effect. The second one is the prohibition of drugs. And the third one is the war on people. So follow me with my first point. Before I tell you what the balloon effect is, I'm gonna give you a small little economic lesson. So in economics, if we were to if we were to lower the supply of something before we ever actually lower the demand of it, economics will tell us that the price of that supply will go up. And economics would also tell us that if the supply if the price of the supply went up, that product sales would normally go down because normal people aren't really don't want to pay a high price for something that used to be lower. This is what people believe is normally the logical thing that will happen to drugs. If we were to stop the supply of drugs and make them go down, the price would go up and people will stop paying for it. But in, that, but in actual reality, that's not the case. As you can see here, the supply for drugs will always be in demand. People will always want drugs and no matter the price of it. People will always be addicted to it and will be willing to pay any price for it. This will also basically mean that anyone who is willing to put their lives, to put their, their lives at risk to make drugs and have people pay for it will always be there. This brings me to the balloon effects. According to Goha, the, com Goha, the Conferential Hemispheric Affairs, the balloon effect is a drug analogy used by drug policy analysis to talk about the distribution of drugs. It basically means when you squish a balloon, the air will go to one side. So when we stop the supply of drugs in one place, it basically means we're not stopping it, but we're just moving the supply to another place. No other better example of this was meth in the United States. We tried to, the US, United States government tried to stop meth by trying to stop the chemicals that were being used. This only made big factories stop making drugs since their chemicals were no longer being able to be used. But it meant that smaller places in, the urban, out, in urban places would make like, meth illegally using chemicals that weren't allowed. The US government found this out and tried to stop their use by then to the stop the distribution of the illegal chemicals, which didn't stop them, which didn't stop meth being in the United States, because it then meant the Mexico brought their meth into the United States. And Mexico, knowing what the US, US government was doing, made better meth because they used other chemicals the United States didn't know, and they also hit their meth better so they could be able to distribute it around the country. So even though the United States tried to stop the distribution of meth in the United States, they all, all they ended up with doing was making Mexico's meth get to the United States, which was a lot more better and got people addicted, and was a lot easier for Mexico to buy. The second point is the prohibition of the drugs. Prohibition only made the drugs that were here a lot stronger. If you can go back to the prohibition of alcohol, a lot of people, a lot of people started to go for hard liquors instead of beer because even because they weren't allowed to actually drink alcohol, they wanted to get that drunk faster. So they would go for the harder stuff. That what happens with the use of drugs. People, if once the drugs were weren't allowed, people would go for the harder drugs if they wanted the high faster instead of the lower drugs. This also meant the prohibition made violence go up in the in the United States. As you can tell, cartels don't really go again, don't really fight against other cartels in a very good political way. Cartels would fight each other and go in wars so they can put their drugs and they can make better money. This meant, in an article, The Economics Behind the U.S., um, in, economics, in economics who was studying the drugs, the drug prohibition, believed that 25 to 75% of violence went up because of the prohibition against drugs. And this was also a case in Mexico, where the front lines where the drugs were being brought back and forth, where their drug, their homicides went up by 50%. My last topic that I'm talking to you is the war on people. 
the war on drugs wasn't just so people would stop using drugs and people and would stop selling drugs. We have had the rate of homicide has gone up, making more arrests go up. And it has been no it's been no surprise that a lot of the people that get arrested for drugs have been minors and people of minority. According to the criminal justice statute, African Americans and whites do drugs at similar rates, but the imprisonment rate of African Americans for drug charges is about almost six times that of whites. It's also African Americans represent 12.5 of the illicit drug users, but 29% of them are those arrests for the drug offense and 33 of those incarcerated in the state facilities for drug offenses. Blacks are a lot more common to be arrested for minor youth drug use and for non-violent drug use. And while this shouldn't be a surprise, I don't know if people see it as one, but it shouldn't be, because when Nixon made the war on drugs, he wasn't just doing the war on drugs, but the war on people. And if anybody can tell you was Nixon's first aid, that this to say. We knew we couldn't make it illegal to be either against the war or blacks. We were getting the public to associate the hippies with marijuana and blacks with heroin, and then criminalizing both heavily. We could disrupt those communities, we could arrest their leaders, break their homes, break their community meetings, and vilify them night after night on the evening news. Did we know we were lying about the drugs? Of course we did. The war on drugs wasn't just the war on drugs. It was a war on people. It was a war on people Nixon thought he could get rid of and saw as a threat. A war on people who tried to go against Nixon and were making his policies be harder. Nixon used the war on drugs as an excuse to move around, to put people um, in shame because of the drugs and tried to get rid of them. Nixon started the war on drugs four years ago, and to this day, it's still in effect. It is not as big as it used to be, and many people are starting to realize that maybe we shouldn't have had this war in the first place, but it still hasn't come to the full effect that we should have, that we should stop it. We went to the balloon effect, which basically is a recap that even though we try to stop drugs, they'll always keep moving to another place. The prohibition of drugs, which really just made drugs a lot stronger and made violence go up, and looked at the war on people, which is what the war on drugs really was behind when Nixon started. This is why I believe that the war on drugs did more harm than good and actually was not about the drugs, the people, and why we should stop the war on drugs today. Thank you.